Hello, my name is Chris Gonzalez, and I'm one of the co-authors on the SRCD monograph, Perceptual Access Reasoning in Developing a Representational Theory of Mind, which was led by Bill Fabricius. In this video, I want to give you an overview and some examples from the belief understanding scale, which we discussed in chapter nine of the monograph. The belief understanding scale is a short laboratory measure that can be administered in less than five minutes with preschool aged children. We argue that the main advantage of the belief understanding scale over other measures of theory of mind is that it can be used to differentiate between children who use belief reasoning, perceptual access reasoning, reality reasoning, and children who switch between perceptual access reasoning and reality reasoning. The scale uses the judgment plus justification true belief and false belief contents task that are presented in chapter 9 of the monograph. In the scale, children must provide a correct belief judgment and justification on both tasks to be scored as using belief reasoning. Other combinations of judgments and justifications are scored along the lower level strategies on an ordinal scale. The belief understanding scale utilizes a commonly used false belief contents task with an added justification question, as well as a true belief variant of the task. In both tasks, children are shown different kinds of familiar containers, in this example, we'll use a candy box for both so we can directly compare the two tasks, but in practice, you'd want to use different containers for each. Any sort of opaque container that children are familiar with can be used. In the video examples I'll show you shortly, you'll see that we've used Band-Aid boxes, crayon boxes, Play-Doh containers, and branded toy box such as Lego containers. Now in both tasks, children are initially asked what they think is in the container before they are shown that it contains something unexpected. In this example, it is a key, but again, it can be any sort of child-friendly object that the child would be familiar with and would sound similar if rattled around in the box. It is important to note here that we let the child hold the item briefly in both tasks after it is removed from the box. Holding the item helps the child remember what was inside the box when they first saw it. Where the task differs in the next step, in the false belief variant of the task, the unexpected object is just placed back inside the box, whereas in the true belief variant of the task, the expected item is placed back inside the box and the unexpected item is set aside. For the judgment question, children are asked what someone else will think is inside the box, and for the justification question, children are asked why that person will think that. From these four questions, children can be categorized in the different levels on the belief understanding scale. Children's judgments are scored as correct or incorrect, and children's justifications are scored as involving belief reasoning or not. In other words, do children refer to the picture in the box as causing the person's belief? In the supplemental materials in Chapter 9, we provide a coding scheme for how to classify different types of justifications, but we found that the most concise use of the scale involves coding justifications as using belief reasoning or not. Before showing you some examples of children's responses on the belief understanding scale, I wanted to detail exactly how children's responses are scored. More broadly, children can be scored as using reality reasoning, perceptual access reasoning, or belief reasoning. However, we also found that some children will switch between reality reasoning and perceptual access reasoning, and this table shows how children's responses fit into these four scores. With reality reasoning, children provide a correct judgment on the true belief task, but provide an incorrect judgment on the false belief task. Justifications in this pattern are not considered, but often involve referring to the actual contents of the box. With perceptual access reasoning, children provide an incorrect judgment on the true belief task and a correct judgment on the false belief task. Judgments again are not considered in this pattern, but usually involve referring to the other person's lack of perceptual access to or knowledge of the box's actual contents. Children can also be scored as switching between reality reasoning and perceptual access reasoning, and there are two patterns of responses that can lead to this score. In the first switching pattern, children provide incorrect judgments on both the true and false belief tasks, and justifications in this pattern are not considered. In the second switching pattern, children provide correct judgments on both the true and false belief task, but are unable to give belief reasoning justifications on both tasks. Finally, with belief reasoning, children provide a correct judgment on both tasks and also provide belief reasoning justifications on both tasks. These strategies are scored on an ordinal scale where reality reasoning is scored as 0, switching is scored as 1, PAR is scored as 2, and belief reasoning is scored as 3. In this video clip, you'll see an example of a child scored as using reality reasoning on the belief understanding scale. Take a look at this box. What do you think is in here? Legos. Legos. All right, so I'm going to show you what's in here. What's that? It's a frog. A frog! You know what? Can you help me put some Legos inside? Hey, 
Thank you so much. All right, hold on to that cup there. Okay, so what's inside the box now? Legos. Legos. And what was inside the box when I first showed it to you? A frog. A frog. I have a friend named Sam. He's never seen inside this box. When he first looks at the box, before he opens it, will he think there are Legos or a frog inside? Legos. Legos. And why will he think there are Legos inside? I thought it's a Lego box. Because it's a Lego box. Why don't you take a look at this can? What do you think is in here? Play-Doh. Play-Doh. All right, so I'm going to show you what's in here. What is that? It's a pom-pom. A pom-pom. It's pretty cool, right? All right, can you put that back in there for me? Thank you so much. All right, so what kind of can is this? A Play-Doh box. A, a Play-Doh box. And what's inside the box now? A pom-pom. A pom-pom. Alright, so I have a friend named Susie. She's never seen inside this box. When she first looks at the box, before she opens it, will she think there is Play-Doh or a pom-pom inside? Okay. Hmm? Okay. Which one will she think is inside first, bud? No, so when she a, a pom-pom. A pom-pom. And why will she think there is a pom-pom inside? A duck. A duck. A no Play-Doh in it. Because there's no Play-Doh in it. As you just saw, the child was able to give a correct judgment on the true belief task, but gave an incorrect judgment on the false belief task. In this video clip, you'll see an example of a child scored as switching on the belief understanding scale. Take a look at this box. What do you think is in here? Crayons. Alright, so I'm going to show you what's in here. A car. What is it? Yeah, a car, right. Alright. Can you help me put some crayons inside? Thank you. All right. All right. So what's inside the box now? Crayons. Crayons. And what was inside the box when I first showed it to you? A car. A car. Okay. So this is my friend Sam. He's never seen inside this box before. When he first looks at the box before he opens it, will he think that there are crayons or a car inside? Um, a car inside. A car? And why will he think that there's a car inside? Definitely, there was no crayons when you first opened it. There was no cr crayons when you first opened it? Mm -hmm. I want you to take a look at this box. What do you think is in here? A band-aid. Band-aids, right. So I'm going to show you what's in here. Oh, what is it? A shell. A shell. You want to touch it? Ooh, that's pretty cool, right? Mm -hmm. You want to put it back in the box for me? Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. So what kind of box is this? A band-aid box. A band-aid box, right. What's inside the box now? A shell. A shell. All right. So I have a friend named Susie. She's never seen inside this box. When she first looks at the box before she opens it, will she think that there are, are band-aids or a shell inside? Shell inside. A shell. And why will she think that there is a shell inside? That's why there's no band-aid. What? That's why there's no band-aid. Because there's no band-aids? 
As you just saw, the child gave an incorrect answer on both the true belief judgment question and the false belief judgment question. A child can also be categorized in this strategy when giving a correct answer on both judgment questions, but failing to give a correct belief justification on both tasks. All right, moving on here. Can you, why don't you take a now look at this box? What do you think is in here? Crayons. Crayons. All right, so I'm going to show you what's in here. Whoa, what is that? Oh, God. Right, want to hold? Did you want to play with it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ooh. Here, can you help me put some crayons inside this box? Yeah. Why do we need to do that? That's part of our game. Can I get the last one? Thank you. There it is. Fit. Okay. So what's inside the box now? Crayons. Crayons. And what was inside the box when I first showed it to you? Car. A car. So I have a friend named Sam. He's never seen inside this box. When he first looks at the box before he opens it, will he think there are crayons inside or a car inside? A car. A car. And why will he think there's a car inside? Because, um, because there was a car in before. Because there was a car before. All right, guess what? Here, now I want you to take a look at this box. What do you think is in here? Bandages. Bandages. I can tell the pictures. All right, well, you know what? I'm going to show you what's in here. Whoa, what is that? Seashell. A seashell. Did you want to see it? Yeah. And did you want to hold it? Whoa, that's so cool. So can you put that back in there for me? Thank you very much. All Where right. did you get that? Mm. All right, so what kind of box is this? Bandage box. A bandage box. And what's inside the box now? The book. You don't know? Well, remember, you were just holding it. What were you just holding? Seashell. A seashell. So what's inside the box now? Seashell. A seashell. All right, so I have a friend named Susie. All right. She's never seen inside this box. When she first looks at the box, before she opens it, will she think there are bandages inside or a seashell inside? Bandages. Bandages. And why will she think there are bandages inside? Because it's a bandage picture. Because it's a bandage picture. As you just saw, the child gave an incorrect answer on the true belief judgment question, but gave a correct answer on the false belief judgment question. In this last video clip, you'll see an example of a child's court is using belief reasoning on the belief understanding scale. Take a look at this box. What do you think is in here? Crayons. Crayons. I'm going to show you what is in here. A car. A car. Okay. Let's put some crayons inside this box. Can you help me put them in there? Thank you. Okay. What's inside the box now? Crayons. Crayons. What was inside the box when I first showed it to you? A car. A car. I have a friend named Sam. He's never seen inside this box. When he first looks at the box before he opens it, will he think there are crayons or a car inside? Crayons. Crayons. Why will he think there are crayons inside? Because there's a crayon picture. Because there is a crayon picture. Take a look at this box. What do you think is in here? A band-aid. A band-aid. I'm going to show you what is in here. 
A shower. Do you want to see a shower? Yeah. Can you help me put it back in the box? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So what kind of box is this? A bandage box. A band-aid box. And what's inside the box now? holding it and we put it back in the box? A shell. A shell. I have a friend named Susie. She's never seen inside this box. When she first looks at the box, before she opens it, will she think there are band-aids or a shell inside? A band-aid. A band-aid. Why will she think there is a band-aid inside? Because the picture is of a band-aid. Because the picture is of a band-aid. As you just saw, the child was able to give a correct answer on both the true and false belief judgment questions and gave a belief reasoning justification on both tasks. Thank you so much for your interest in our work. For more information, please see the SRCD monograph titled Perceptual Access Reasoning in Developing a Representational Theory of Mind and the additional materials we have prepared for Monograph Matters at monographmatters.srcd.org. Thank you so much.